wake up. I'm here at the Cinema Museum in Kennington, which is an absolute treasure trove of a cinema memorabilia. I'm here with Neil Brand, the country's leading silent cinema pianist with whom I've worked in the past. Neil and I have been here today recording stuff for a program we're making for Radio 2, which is going out on the 25th of this month. 10 o'clock, it's a program about the music for silent movies. And whilst we've been recording this interview, Neil has come across a fantastic book, which is a kind of indication of the art of the, uh, the silent cinema pianist. Tell me about that book, Neil. What is it? This is Erno Rappe's Motion Picture Moods, and it's actually the Bible for a silent film pianist who can't improvise. It's every possible mood you could re be required to play, different styles of music, different national anthems, everything that fits to whatever the scene might be. So this would basically go out to a pianist who are going to accompany a selection of, of, of movies, and it theoretically will give them a piece of music for every mood that may be represented on screen. Absolutely, and it gives them a very quick alphabetical index down the side okay. as to how fast they can get to the next piece of music. So we have here dances, we have children, we have grotesque, horror. Horror, page 173, you immediately go to 173 as soon as anything horrific happens, yep. assuming you can, uh, and there will be a whole load of music that fits beautifully with horror films, or at least a suggestion of what could be used. And here it is, The Overture de Phedre by Massenet, or The Abduction of the Bride from the Second Pier Gint Suite by Edvard Grieg. These wouldn't just be well-known pieces of music. These could be specially written or composed. They're stuff that will fit, and that's the main thing about them. Okay, well, let's, let's give this the, you know, the, the, the road test. Let's, let's find a <laughs> mood here. This is how cinema used to work. So <laughs> let's say, for example, I'm watching a film and it has in it a scene of happiness. It's happiness here, page 202. Okay. Can you turn to page 202 and then play me something that would represent happiness as demonstrated on screen? Okay. So I've got 202. Now one assumes the film's rolling at this point and yep. I'm going as fast as I can to find page 202 away from airplanes. And we have the happy wonder. Okay. Pretty Happy by yep. someone called A. Jensen, and it goes on for four pages. Four pages of happiness. Now, happiness. say, for example, there's a little bit of romance comes in here. We have, uh, do we have romance, or what do we have, love theme? You've got, uh, yeah, love themes here. Oh, love themes, okay, 209. So, oh, so not the, very the far happiness away. has turned into romance. <coughs> Play me a little bit of that. <laughs> this is a piece the by Anton theme. Dvorak called The Old, the old Mother. Mother. <laughs> because I can't think of anything <laughs> more romantic than a piece of music called The Old Mother. <laughs> And I've got to try and, with my terrible sight reading, uh, and I will try and do this. Well, my heartstrings are a flutter now. The action has heated up rather. The romance has turned into something a bit more heated. Page 487. It's an orgy. So let's play wow. me what would happen as suddenly the action on screen turns to a, to a bacchanalian orgy. <laughs> With some speed. With some speed, yeah. yes. There we go. Uh, Bizet's fourth movement from the Arlesian Suite. You may not recognize this. And that goes on for three pages of orgy at least. I have four, to be five, honest, six is going on for I mean, you know, I don't have first hand experience of this, but <laughs> that doesn't sound much like an orgy to me. No, nor me neither. But then it's probably as much of an orgy as they could manage at the Bijou in Isha at the time. Finish off with something here. Let's have let's have Western, because obviously Western is always a, an enduring genre. Page 665, there's suddenly a Western theme, a man riding into town. On a horse, what do we have? We have Western Allegro. I don't think they're thinking of Westerns in our, in our kind of way of Western. It's not so much a genre thing as more a scene of maybe something celebrational and something communal. This book is absolutely wonderful. I mean, we have here, we have, you know, festivals, firefighting, funerals, grotesque, gruesome, 
humorous hunting impatience lullabies mysterious a, a, a piece of music for monotony which yeah. <laughs> I love that's presumably for some of the more challenging works of deserts or deserts, something yeah, like that yeah. sort. Oriental parties, passion parties. This is the kind of thing that uh, silent uh, uh, cinema accompanists would work from. Mm. And it, it, I think it is important to understand just what a great art form that was, that they could literally flick page to page and accompany a movie as it played out. Absolutely, and the chances were, while they were flicking from one to the other, they were keeping something going with one hand. So even while they're looking for page 208, they're still doing... before they play the Polish National Anthem, which is what we've come across here. So there's always an element of reading, and there may be a bit of improvisation slipped in there at the same time. Neil, your great talent has always been improvisation. Just to end this Kermit Uncut blog, would you end us on a moment of triumph? Certainly. <laughs> <laughs>